Hey everybody, today is Tuesday, February, February 20th, 2024. I'm parked on the, the side of the road in the, in the brush here in Malvern, Pennsylvania. And the reason why we are in, Mal we are in Malvern, Pennsylvania, parked along the, the brush, along this somewhat kind of busy road right next to a major, I don't even know what highway that is, very, very close to a, a major highway here on Diamond Rock, road is because we are here to check out something something interesting something i've been wanting to check out for some time now turns out there's really nowhere to actually like really park to to look at this though unfortunately except for this little little area right here off the side of the road i don't know if they actually i mean i'm guessing they put this in here so people could pull over and take a look at this i know they do open houses or at least they they did do open houses. I checked their website and the last open house they had mentioned was all the way back in 2018. So they might not have actually had an open house here since 2018, I don't know, but I guess supposedly, occasionally they do. So maybe this little area, this little kind of parking area here, this um, this like shoulder on the road that's, that's nowhere else along the road. Maybe this was put here specifically for like, three cars maybe total to pull over and um and take a look at what we're going to take a look at today really don't want to get run over so all right anyway again we are here in malvern pennsylvania this is something i have wanted to take a look at for a while now i knew this existed i've driven past this before and i've actually driven past other ones of these before there are a few of these in the area but i figured we come out figured we come out today to take a look at this one we are here to see the Diamond Rock School. This is a schoolhouse built in 1818. Look at this. It's an octagonal schoolhouse. How cool is that? I, I love this. Again, I've driven past these before. I knew this was a schoolhouse. I remember even as a child driving past these and asking my mom, hey, wh what is that? And she knew that it was an old schoolhouse Diamond Rock School, built 1818, restored in 1909. Historical property, Diamond Rock Octagonal Schoolhouse, 1818 to 1864. That is awesome. I would love to go inside here. I was hoping maybe they were doing open houses sometime soon or, or something. But again, the last time I saw an open schoolhouse listed was in 18, wait, 1818. No, it was in 2018. So... Maybe they were doing some kind of uh, anniversary or, or something like that when they were doing the open houses. But look at this. How awesome is that? Restored in 1909, built in 1818. This is pretty awesome looking. So it's very close to the, uh, the road here. Now a historical property that they do keep up, they do keep restored. I love this kind of thing. I love I love this weird history, especially the weird history that just sits like off the side of the road like this. I guarantee you, most people driving up and down this road are, right, are on the highway that can maybe see it through the trees. Probably look over, they see this and they think, mm, probably not much. They probably don't think much about this. Oh, it's a weird shaped building and they just keep on, keep on driving. But even as a kid, I would see this and think, that's interesting. I wanna know more about this. So I, I did some research. Figure today would be the day we finally come out here and see the Diamond Rock School. Crazy to think that at one point this schoolhouse served the entire community, I believe grades one through six. That is, uh, that's insane. You think about the schools that kids go to nowadays, even the school I went to when I was a kid, which was a much smaller school than, than the schools that are being built nowadays. But think about this, think about the size of schools nowadays. They're huge. Like these these elementary schools seem almost like giant, I mean, I know it's kind of weird to say, but giant prisons or something. They're, they're these huge complexes. They're, they're insanely gigantic. You drive past this thing, you're like, what is that building? And then you see a sign that says the so-and-so schoolhouse or so-and-so you know, elementary school. And you're like, that's an elementary school? There's gotta be like 40 million kids in that school for it to be that size. Well, at one point, this was it. This tiny little building right here is all that was needed to serve the entire community and as I say that I I almost fall off the the side of the side of the, the wall there and into the street got to be careful so as the plaque up here stated 
This did serve until 1864, from 1818 to 1864. And then the community did start to actually grow and, and this schoolhouse was outgrown. But again, serving grades one through six, six different grades were in here, which is again, just kind of crazy to think about. So the reason why it was designed this way, the reason why it's not a, a square or even a circle, the reason why it's octagonal is because each, each wall, each one of these walls was for a different, a different grade. So let's say grade one, grade two, grade three. Then the back wall would have been where the teacher was. That was the teacher's wall. Grade four, grade five, and then grade six. Each one having their own window as well. And then of course the, the front of the, the building. So each, each wall served a different grade. They'd actually face their, face their desks towards the wall, towards the window, and they do, they do their schoolwork. And then right in the middle, you see where there's a chimney coming out the top was an old, an old stove right in the right in the center that would provide heat coming from the stove for the children and the teacher inside. This was built by the community as well. It was mostly a, a Mennonite community and they actually put their their time and their money into to building this. They they supplied all the supplies to build this and then they were the ones to actually build it and to hire a teacher to teach the children. So pretty awesome. This was before the days of, of public schools. Public schools did not come into existence until a few decades later. That, that became a thing in, in Pennsylvania eventually, but for a long time, there wasn't public schools. If you wanted to have a school, your town had to put the school together. They had to, they had to supply the supplies, build the school, hire a teacher. That was all up to the town. That was not up to the state. It was not a public school system. It was something your town had to put together. So just again, weird to think that this tiny little little schoolhouse, I mean, this is smaller than most garages nowadays or, or even like a little barn. I mean, I, I've seen, I drive past houses that have sheds that are bigger than this. And this served six grades. So again, wasn't a very big community back in the day. Malvern was much, much smaller. Can't really see inside, unfortunately, due to the fact that it's, uh, trying to i'm trying to peer in there and it looks like there's a, there's a there's a stove like a coal stove i think it is could be wooden i think it's a coal stove though looks looks too small to be um wood but i could be wrong about that little little like coal sto stove in the middle and then yeah i see a little teacher's desk in the back and there's some books in there but look looking inside here again i wish i could kind of show it to you but i i don't think you can really see there you go oh, there you go you can kind of see inside there Look at that, it's so tiny. So incredibly small in there. I can't even begin, <laughs> I put my hands like through the bars. I can't even begin to imagine six grades in there. And I think the teacher had to teach all sixth grades. You were teaching children who were just learning things all the way up to grade six, kids who had already, you know, were, were more, more advanced. I have read that a lot of times the teacher would actually use the children who who had already learned this stuff. So grade one would be getting help getting taught by by the higher up grades as well because you know they already knew their reading and writing and arithmetic their 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 simple reading and writing and arithmetic. You know they knew one plus one and the other kids would would help out. So interesting to think that the teacher would would use the other pupils to help the other people. So it was it was the teacher you know teaching, but it was also the kids helping all the other kids learn as well. I don't know if this is a stone wall here, an old stone wall or just some stones that were randomly placed. You can see there's, there's all these stones here. So this is pretty awesome. Still some snow covering the back of the, the schoolhouse as well. You can see where the, uh, the sun does not hit. It's always interesting to watch the way snow melts in the area. You can tell where what parts of a house get the most the most uh, sunlight in fact if you're ever thinking, thinking about installing installing solar panels on your house 
and you do, do live in an area that gets snow, pay attention during the winter. Pay attention to where your snow melts and where your snow does not melt. Where it melts first, that's where you're gonna wanna place your, your solar panels because uh, where it doesn't melt, you're not getting much sun there. But yeah, this is really awesome. Tiny little schoolhouse, little chimney from the stove right in the center in grades one through six being taught here by one teacher, but also being helped out by all the other pupils in the in the uh, school as well. I would love to get in here. I'd really love to go inside there, but again, like I said, I haven't actually seen anything about a, an open house since 2018. So very well could not have been open since since then. They do apparently every, well, it's getting from what I was reading, every, every summer up until 2018. I don't forget, I don't think they've done anything after that. Their website does not say anything after 2018, but at least up until 2018 during the summer, they would open this up on specific days for people to come out and take a look at this. Again, where anybody parked, I don't know, because that's the only parking I see around here. That little tiny, little tiny area over there. I'm, waiting, I'm still waiting for my van to get hit by a, a truck or something driving past, but so they supposedly during the summer, at least they used to do open houses a couple days throughout the summer. And then you could, you could probably get, or supposedly get public tours as well. I guess if you contact them, they would do some kind of showings, some private showings. If you had a, I guess a certain amount of people who wanted to come out here and see this, maybe I'll have to contact them and see if we could actually get inside. Because again, this is pretty awesome. I would love to check this out. I would love to go inside and just see what it was like to, to go to a school like this. Cause I can't imagine. I went to a school that was built in the, I believe it was the early 1900s was when my school was built. I went from grades um, first and second, first and second grade were in a very, very, very old early 1900s schoolhouse that is now a library. It used to be the, um, used to be a little library. And then it was also the, uh, the historical society moved into there because it's a very historical building. And then the historical society moved into a different building and they now converted the entire old schoolhouse into one giant library. So it's pretty cool to go in that's inside that library because I'm like, I, I walk into a room and I'm like, this is my old classroom. This is where I went to first grade. And then I walk over here. I'm like, I was, this is where I was in second grade. It's crazy because it's just such an old schoolhouse. Didn't have central, central air, had central heating, but did not have central air. I shouldn't even say central heating. I think it was heated by like, um, I think it was like oil heat. I remember they had these really old, like these really old, like heating elements by the, by the, uh, by the walls. I think it was heated by hot water. It's cr crazy. It was just a very old, 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 old schoolhouse. And I thought it was crazy going to a school like that back in the day where they had to open the windows during the summer to let in, to let in air, to cool the kids off and birds would fly into the windows and stuff. It was, it was a really old, very old schoolhouse, huge, tall ceilings. It was really cool looking. It's very cool looking inside there. Even nowadays, my, when I visit the library, I love going inside there. But anyway, I thought that was crazy going to an old school like that. That school was a lot more modern in comparison to a school like this. So pretty awesome. And the Diamond Rock School here in Malvern, Pennsylvania, built in 18, built in 1818, serving the rather small community until 1864, until the community outgrew this and they had to, they had to move the children to bigger, accommodations and you can see in 1909 it was restored so pretty awesome that uh it was restored back then i keep tripping over this stick so pretty awesome it, it was restored even back in in 1909 because i would find that a lot of times things did not start to get restored until much much later back in 1909 it seems like people did not really care about history as much or at least they didn't care about all history as much maybe major history but even some of that people would just build over and not and tear down and not really care about so pretty awesome that the i believe it was the old pupils of the school kids who used to attend this school as adults they took it upon themselves to make sure this school was preserved and would not get torn down would not get tear, uh, would not get torn down would not fall down it was in pretty bad condition fell into disrepair actually but they they didn't they they, they then did repair it and made it look as it looks today and all these years later still stands here looking beautiful that is just too awesome i know for some of you depending on where you live what country you live in 200 years old might not seem 
all that long ago. But here in the United States, 200 years ago actually is fairly decently long ago. To think this school, again, was built in 1818, so it's over 200 years old. I mean, just to think that this school has, has stood here, this building has been here for, for that long. Things like this don't usually stick around that long. Again, they do fall into disrepair. They do just completely fall down and and they get they get abandoned or maybe a house will build its proper build a, build a house right here and they'll turn this into like a barn or something and maybe it'll serve as a barn for a while and then eventually that'll fall down and go into disrepair i see things like that and hear things like that all the time so to think that this was restored back in 1909 by pupils who once who once attended to this school kids who once attended the school then became adults wanted to see their old schoolhouse saved and restored and kept as a piece of piece of history for the malvern area for future people to come out and see and 200 years later over 200 years later it still stands here for people to come out and see again a, a parking lot would would be nice i don't know if like i see the fence over here and i think I would assume the, the end of, maybe this is uh, probably owned by the township, the end of the, end of the property would probably be, I'm guessing, where that, where that fence is, not where the stone wall is. I, I could be wrong. I don't know who owns this little bit of property right here. But if they could just turn this into a, a parking lot, just saying, that would make things all, all the different. Because I don't think people probably come out here very often to take a look at this. People drive past it. You can see this road is very, very busy. Again, the highway right there. But as I've been out here filming, tons of cars have been driving up and down Diamond Rock Road here. They've been going up and down, coming to this intersection, getting very close to my van that's precariously parked along the, the, side, the side of the road. I'm, I'm hearing cars backfire, right? At least I hope that's backfiring cars right now. So again, all these cars driving up and down here all throughout the day, people driving right past this, probably looking at it, thinking, what is that? But I guarantee you not many people pulling over to actually stop, read the plaque, get up close, look through the windows, really, you know, get a get a good feel, legitimate feel of this. That's awesome. Feel of this um, this old schoolhouse. They probably don't really know what they're they're looking at and what this is. I guarantee you, that person there does not know. The person just drove and came very close. Actually, that lady, that lady took this corner really, really tight. She she almost hit the uh, the wall. She was probably too busy paying attention to what I was doing, not pay pen paying attention to her driving. I don't know. She, she almost hit that wall, actually. I can see that probably happening quite often. But anyway, I guarantee these people probably don't really pull over and take the time to see this because there's really nowhere to pull over and see this. If the township would just maybe build a little parking lot in back, I would guarantee you that throughout the year, maybe not a lot of people. We're not talking, you know, hundreds of thousands, but maybe, maybe a few hundred, maybe a thousand people. Again, during the summer months, spring months, fall months, even th throughout the winter, you can probably pull over, pull in here, and just walk over to take some photos, read the plaques, look through the windows, and finally find out what this building they've been driving past all these years is. Luckily, there is that little spot over there to park at, but a parking lot would make things so much easier. I think we need one. Because again, this is cool. This is awesome. 200 plus year old schoolhouse. Diamond Rock Schoolhouse, 1818. So cool. I'm trying to get a look inside here. That is too awesome. Again, the old coal stove there. You see the, the teacher's desk in back. Looks like they have some historical items in there in the case, a little bookshelf. Maybe that's a, like a child's desk right there. Look at the old, the, the ceilings. There you go. It's really neat looking inside there. The, the construction of this building is pretty awesome. Built by, built by the Mennonites of the area. Again, this was a mostly predominantly Mennonite community. So they, they built this, they put this together. They, they got the materials, they built this, they hired the school teacher, they built something, a structure for the kids to, to be taught lessons and to learn to actually give their children an education. The, the, the town, the town made sure their own children 
would have an education by putting this together. That is, that is too cool. So, all right. Awesome schoolhouse. Really wanted to come out here and see this. Again, I've driven up and down this road multiple times. As a kid, I remember my mom and I in the car driving past this, me asking her what this was, her telling me it was an old schoolhouse. And ever since then, I have been fascinated by, by this old schoolhouse. And I have been wanting to, wanting to come out here and see this. Again, there are other ones of these in the area. I would like to go visit them at some point as well. These old school houses are kind of just all, they, they sort of dot the area. They're all over the place. And I do believe there are other octagonal schoolhouses in the area as well. I've seen square ones. I've seen octagonal ones. This is not the only one, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And I want to find those other ones and visit them at some point as well. That is something I definitely plan on, on doing. But I figure for now, we come out here. We check this one out because this is the one I remember driving past the most as a kid. This is the one I remember. Rem <laughs> this is the one I remember my mom telling me about. What the heck was that? I feel like maybe I should be walking underneath these trees. Branches are, are falling down. Widowmakers, as they call them. But I remember, remember, my mom's so cold. I remember my mom and I driving past this and her telling me what it was. And ever since I was a little tiny kid, just being fascinated by the thought of children going to school in an old, old schoolhouse like this. Really, really cool. But all right, again, it is cold. So I think we're going to wrap this video up. And I also don't want a branch falling on me. All right, guys. So leave your comments down below. I want to hear from you. I want to hear about your experiences, your stories with old schoolhouses like this old 1800s schoolhouses maybe early 1900s schoolhouses have you ever visited these have you ever been inside these have you ever toured these have you ever been inside the diamond rock schoolhouse here if you have absolutely leave a comment down below i want to hear about how amazing it has to be inside there it's got to be so cool i, I i'm going to contact the uh historical society and see if we can actually get inside here at some point i would love to come back out here and actually go inside that would be really really awesome but again i want to hear from you guys i want to hear your stories about old schoolhouses were you like me did you used to drive past these as a kid and were just fascinated by the idea of an old one room schoolhouse of an old 1800s octagonal schoolhouse were you fascinated by them if you were let me know or if you've just visited visited these if you've gone out to these if you've been inside these let me know i want to hear your stories about these old schoolhouses. So awesome. This one, over 200 years later, still stands, lovingly restored, 1909 by ex-pupils. Pupils, children who used to attend this school, turned adults and said, hey, the schoolhouse is falling down. It's falling into disrepair. If we don't do something, this schoolhouse will not be here much longer. It'll be just a pile of rubble. Let's do something to make sure that this piece of history, a piece of our history remains for, for generations to see. So awesome that it still stands to this day. I love when buildings are, are turned into historical monuments, turned into historical buildings that you can come out and maybe possibly tour every, every so awesome again. Amazing, this still stands. Like I was saying, we do have other schoolhouses like this in the area. I absolutely want to get out to them. If you're from this area and you have an old schoolhouse that you would like me to go visit and talk about and, and document, absolutely let me know because I want to go visit more of these. So let me know if you're from the area and you want me to go visit a different schoolhouse. I will absolutely try to do that before I move down to Florida. This is so cool. I know other ones of these do exist. In fact, I know we have a whole bunch of old public schoolhouses back in the days of when, when public schools were just becoming a thing. A lot of those buildings, those still do exist. Some of them have been torn, in, torn into, turned into historical buildings for tours and whatnot. And many of them have actually been turned into to houses. You can tell when an old, an old building used to be a schoolhouse. It has that, like, that, that look, that square one room schoolhouse look with the front porch and the, usually the, the bell steeple on top. You can tell when you drive past a private residence and say, that used to be an old schoolhouse back in the day. So some of them have been turned into houses, but that's so cool. I, I like it. As long as the building still stands, I'm usually pretty happy. I love to see a good museum, don't get me wrong. But if a, if a building like this 
an old building like this it gets turned into a home or something like that and the structure still does stand i'm happy with that things getting kind of recycled if you will that's still fine by me i just like seeing these buildings remain and stand and lovingly taken care of and restored and still being around for for generations to see but all right guys again leave your comments down below if you have stories about an old schoolhouse if you've been inside one of these schoolhouses if you've been inside this one leave the comments down below i want to hear from you guys but all right i'm freezing i'm starting to mumble now my <laughs> it's, it's getting cold standing in the sun it feels kind of good but it gets to the point where even even the heat from the sun doesn't do much and your your extremities start to start to get numb and you can't really feel your hands anymore and your mouth just starts to go numb and your nose and you can't even feel your nose anymore yeah it's it's cold out here it's like 30 something degrees so we're gonna get back into my van parked again precariously on the side of the road township i'm just saying a parking lot right in back there would would help so much it'd be so appreciated for people wanting to come out and see this amazing structure because this is cool but all right guys I'm going to let you guys go now. So as always, thank you so much for checking out this video. Be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, check down below for links to Patreon. If you guys do become a patron, I will send you a postcard every single month from the road. Also check down below for a link to Spreadshirt, where you can grab yourself retro rest stop t-shirts, proceeds, both from Spreadshirt and from Patreon to help support the show. And they do keep the show going. So I really do appreciate that, guys. It really does mean a whole lot to me. And you guys watch this video... <laughs> you guys watch this video all the way until the very end. Oh my gosh, I don't know. What should today's hashtag be? Okay, hashtag, hashtag, we need a parking lot. There you go. Hashtag, we need a parking lot. Because I don't like the whole parking on the side of the road thing. Hashtag, we need a parking lot if you guys watch this video all the way until the very end. But all right, guys, again, that's it. So thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And if you do hit that subscribe button or you are subscribed, then I will see you guys in the next video. All right, have a good one. Bye. All right, so before I let you guys go, how many of you know this trick here? So the whole time I've been filming, I've been finding these little acorn shells, these, uh, these bottom halves of the, the acorns. Did you know? Did you know you could turn these into, into uh, whistles? You kind of take your hand and do do that with them and if I can do this right it's been a long time since I've done this I can make this a whistle might take me a few tries let's find, let's, let's find out Shh. oh almost Shh. all done with an acorn shell the things you learn in Cub Scouts comments down below if you've ever done that all right anyway thanks for watching guys <laughs> bye